This is video clip number three for Crazy Creatures. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this wing of the owl to my walrus and uh, beta fish head. So I'm going to put it right about here, bring it right off the back of the walrus, put it in. Press a little harder so you can see it a little better. Bring it all the way down. I'm staring at the photocopy because I want to draw what I see. I don't want to draw what I'm thinking about because I want the wing to turn out. Now we're going to come back. Now I'm going to get rid of some of these wrinkles and things after I get most of the wing in. Doesn't take me long to get the wing shape. And there we have it. There's a wing of our owl. It needs a few more things. We're going to map it out here. Okay. I'm going to put a little extra bit of wing right here underneath. Now I'm going to take an eraser real quick, take out some of these wrinkles. I'll make it a little easier to see. We won't get confused. That looks pretty good. I'm going to take out this line here because that's the bottom of the walrus. And we're going to brush the eraser crumbs off. Now we're going to put in some of the designs for the uh, wings. It's just these white shapes. I'm going to map out a few of them. We don't need a lot. We're going to get a few in there, just like so. Just going to move around the shape. There we go. I might poof this out a little further here. There we go. The idea behind Crazy Creatures is to take three separate animals again and create one creature. Now the goal is to create two creatures for the project. So you want to take three different animals each time to create one creature. Now the other thing you want to do is you want to be thinking as you're drawing your your uh, your different creatures as to what kind of environment are they going to live in. Is it going to be an undersea environment? Is it going to be a desert? Is it going to be a, a planet? Is it like a moon where there's craters and things? Are you going to have a combination of, of the sea and the land or the lake and the, and the shore? What are you going to do? Is it going to be up in a tree? What, what are you going to do? What kind of environment will this creature live in? So that's things to think about. There we go. Our wing is starting to take shape. It's got a little bit of a white edge here, so I'm going to map that out. There we go. A few feather lines up here. And it looks pretty good. And there's our creature. Not doing too bad. Um, we haven't put any shading in yet, but we will. This is not a colored pencil project. This will be a shaded project. So you will learn learn to use value and lines and shadows. And I can start putting a few things in on this wing. That'll help us to understand what we're looking at a little better. Shading is a very important thing to make things look three-dimensional or real. So here we go. In the high school we use a nine level value change for our shading. So there's nine squares and you start with your darkest and you get gradually lighter until you go to white and there's nine squares with that. So there can be quite a few different value changes 
we try to suggest that you have at least three value changes in a drawing. Anything less than that and it won't look real. We'll talk more about that in specifics later. Now always shade going one direction. Here with the wing I'm going down. I don't want to shade going back and forth. That tends to make things turn out real uneven and choppy. And that's really not what we're after. We want it to be as realistic as possible. And that's coming along. You can start to see the value showing up in the video. Now I still haven't decided on my environment yet. So we're just going to work on this wing a little bit. And there we go. Well we're at about six minutes so we better stop this video and we can continue with the next segment later.